most of the time in dentistry, if your moral compass is clear, your choices are black and white. If you do the right thing for the patient, it's pretty black and white. So if, you, if I can leave you with that point, make the right decision for the patient, and usually your life in dentistry is going to go the right direction. When you are too arrogant and think too highly of yourself to say that was my mistake, that's when you truly fail. They're all leaders. So what's the one common thread for all of them? I figured it out. Number one, who do you spend your time with? Number two, where's your head at? And number three, uh, figure it out. I had a company called Alexander Shrug, and back in 1972, he went to the Dental Association of Oklahoma and said, You are in a professional school. I have made no bones about it, along with Dr. Haney, that we will support you in every endeavor, but our job is that you become the best dentist possible. My job is not to get you involved in 25,000 different committees to do all this different stuff. My job is for you to be a dentist. And I will never ponder on that. Because when I first got involved in I was now I call it organized dentistry, I didn't know what my leadership skills were. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what my vision was. All I knew is I wanted to get into dental school and I didn't know what the future was. Everything in life that you want to do, you should have a vision for. I have a dental vision, I have a non-dental vision, I have a health vision and a goal, all right? The best way that I hold myself accountable is to write down my vision. So that's awesome. So think about how familiar a couple is when they know each other for 20 years. Think about you all who are meeting new people, dating new people three months, six months, a year, or a couple years for some of you, I'm sure but you have to learn a lot about people fast, right, to get to know them quickly. We've got a lot of different dynamics in our life that make us look at things very, very differently. We've got to understand where our followers are. Before the Affordable Care Act came into place, we had double-digit rate increases every year that outpaced inflation two to one. So inflation might have been 3%, health insurance was going up 7%. Okay. Seven years ago, which is so bizarre, I probably would have laughed. I would have never imagined that I would have been in this position. I would have never even imagined that I would have run for vice president. It totally was not my style. People that embrace change. I'm a person of change. I love to look forward to tomorrow because that's where I'm going to spend the rest of my life. You can talk to me about 1980s. 1990s, 2000, you talk about OU students, I'm sure that's what we did. As Provost Andrews, now Dr. Andrews, said to him one time, he says, Raymond, the bottom line is, is what got us here is not going to get us there. What do I want to do inside practice and outside of practice? He just went over these things. I heard him speak last year. You know what I did last year when he said, if you're not part of the problem, you can't be part of the solution? I went to my dean and I said, we got a problem. 820 will say that for Everything we do, only 20% of the time will be successful. For the people that have succeeded the most have also failed the most. So why is success measured by profit when success should be measured by you individually? Everyone's level of success is different, and no one can take that away from you if you feel like you've achieved, achieved success. If they were going to walk their talk in life, if they had to kind of put their pocketbook aside and put what mattered more to the front of the table, and that was safety. Anybody know what Mercedes slogan is? Their mantra is the best one not. So what Mercedes did was they, you know, we've heard you talk about it a minute, they walked the talk, uh, they, they did what they said they were gonna do, but they proved it. You know, their actions spoke so much louder than their words.